Ovarian cancer is probably the most deadly gynecologic cancer. To date, probably one in maybe only 39 women are diagnosed with cancer over the ovary every year, but it is the most lethal gynecological cancer, so about 12,000 women a year die from the disease. If the cancer is discovered at the early stage, so stage one, the survival is excellent, probably 85, 90% or better, but if, as usually, it is discovered at late stage, survival is less than 30%. So one of the uh, reasons for, uh, for such a dismal fact is that we do not have a good uh, screening diagnostic uh, marker for ovarian cancer. Up to date, there's only been limited uh, detection methods that include a blood test for CA125 levels, which have limited detection ability, as well as pelvic examination and transvaginal ultrasound. In the mid to late 90s, we began to ask the question, can we identify biomarker in uh, epithelial ovarian cancer? And uh, in collaboration with my brother, who is uh, at the University of Washington in Seattle, we began aspirating the fluid content of benign and malignant ovarian lesions, ovarian cysts, to look for the presence of factors which regulate the formation of new blood vessels, the process called angiogenesis. The most frequent ovarian cancer is what we call serous papillary carcinoma. It forms papillae, fibrovascular structures, which contain very prominent blood vessels. So we knew that the process of angiogenesis was very important for ovarian and other cancer. So we measure a number of uh, factors, two of which regulate angiogenesis in a positive way. We call them angiogenic factors, VGF and HGF, and two of them which in a yin and yang fashion negatively regulates angiogenesis, suppresses angiogenesis. And these are called endostatin and angiostatin. And angiostatin was the one which was the most consistently and significantly elevated in this fluid. Angiostatin is a byproduct of a larger molecule which we call plasminogen, which circulates in the blood. And because the smaller size, this substance can be filtered through the kidney and detected in the urine of uh, patients. So what we see in our early study, we see that when we look at angiostatin expression at levels in the urine, angiostatin was uh, a very low negligible level in pre- and postmenopausal women, it was somewhat elevated, but not very much in women with benign ovarian cyst, but was markedly elevated in women with ovarian cancer. It was more elevated in women with advanced ovarian cancer, late stages, but also in women with early, so stage one ovarian cancer. An important finding uh, to be completely validated because survival at stage one is 85 to 90% of five years versus less than 30% in advanced stage. We look at a number of cancer and our, our series has expanded uh, in the last year. And we, again, we saw there was variation in ovarian cancer women, but there was elevation in almost all of them except three or four women. We saw there was uh, an increased uh, expression of angiostatin with, uh, with stage, but this increase was not significantly uh, different. It, angiostatin was basically a below threshold in uh, women with benign ovarian lesion, except three or four of them. And we are trying to find out why that is the case. When we follow patients uh, after a surgery, we also notice good correlation between angiostatin and status of the disease. So if you look here in, in blue, in women where the tumor were removed successfully and they never recur, at least for the period we follow, angiostatin level decrease after surgery and remain very low. But in women where the disease was either chemoresistant or, or returned, came back months after surgery, angiostatin level went up again. We compare also angiostatin with the, the gold standard biomarker today for ovarian cancer, C125, and we noticed that there was fairly good correlation, but also we noticed in some cases where C125 was low, angiostatin was high and vice versa. So we think that uh, angiostatin adds complementarity to C125, and that makes a case uh, for the uh, possible, plausible relevance of utilizing uh, panels of marker versus utilizing a single marker. What will we do next? Uh, we need to verify how specific or not specific is the biomarker angiostatin for ovarian cancer. So we're looking at various cohorts of uh, not only healthy and women with benign disorder, but also women with ovarian cancer and other types of cancers. And that's what we'll be doing in the next two years.
Dr. Crook is a co-investigator in the grant. Uh, we, we work together very well, and uh, she has sent the DOD grant uh, to look at the expression of BCL2, an anti-apoptotic protein uh, in, in urine and blood. BCL2 is normally a cellular protein that is involved in what we call programmed cell death. It controls whether a cell should undergo sort of cell death when it has reached its end limit. It has not generally ever been found outside the cell, and so our studies are very novel in that, for some odd reason, the ovarian cancer cells, shall we say, shed this protein as well. So far, our studies to date indicate that urinary levels of BCL2 appear only elevated in women with ovarian cancer. It does not appear to be elevated in other forms of cancer. So this may be a rather specific biomarker for ovarian cancer. We are currently collaborating with individuals at multiple institutions, including the MD Anderson Cancer Center, to validate how well urinary BCL2 stands up as a urinary biomarker to detect the disease. Up until our studies, uh, there had been no indication that there may be urinary proteins that could be used to detect ovarian cancer. The use of urinary proteins and obviously provides very easy economical testing for the disease and uh, we could test at long distances. So I think that urine provides a, a human specimen which should be readily available, uh, available with, through non-invasive uh, approaches and uh, should make also this uh, test available not only to, to uh, population in, in, of larger city but also in population of women at risk in underserved areas in this country and abroad. So I think that brings the innovation and the applicability of uh, our current study. You can spend years struggling and almost feeling defeated, but one happy moment, one good piece of data will keep you sustained for a long time.